Hello everyone and welcome back to UK Academy. Here we are in a new video in the tickets basket. As you remember in the previous video we have created this repositories project and we have created the first repository which is iUser Profiles. This is the interface and we have created the implementation here uh, which is basically the implementation for the entity framework. Okay, great. Right now we will create what we call unit of work. The unit of work is basically uh, the peer for the DB context in the entity framework in the world of this pattern. So basically, when you interact with the entity framework to insert, update, or read data, you create an instance of DB context, and through that DB context instance, you, you have access to the tables, or you have access to the DB set properties, and then at the end you call save changes, and it's done. Here, because we are based on those interfaces and on those abstractions what we have to do is to create that unit of work will combine all those repositories in one place and we have a function to commit the changes just like db context but those are just abstractions great for extensibility and unit testing and also to change the implementation later very easily so let's start by creating a new item here and i will create a new interface I will call it I unit of work, just like that, and I will click enter. Okay, here let's mark this one as public, and that's great. For now, here I will add all the instances, or I will add sorry, all the repositories as the properties here. So one of the properties I will add I user profiles, which is the only one I have till now, profiles. And it's going to be a read only. The user of this uh, interface couldn't, or for any object, uh, uh, sorry, instance of this interface, cannot manipulate this one. It's only read only. Another thing, so here, other repositories will be, will go here. And another thing that this unit of work will do is basically to commit changes or it, it's the same for save changes async. It's going to call save changes. It's just like this. That's it, it's pretty simple and pretty easy. But this one is interface, as I've said in the previous video, it's very easy for unit testing, very easy for mocking. Your services will be based on this one, not on an instance of entity framework DB context. So let's start with the implementation and the implementation is going to be for entity framework. For this reason, I'm going to call it EF unit of work, just like that, and then I will add implement this interface. That's a great. For this one, what I'm going to do is to inject an instance of application DB context, just like that. Call it DB, and here in the constructor, I'll inject it after I created that private field. So that's it. That's a pretty cool and pretty symbol. Right now, let's implement this by creating this property here. It's a read-only property. But before I do this, let me create a private member for that or a private field. I would call it I user profiles repository. Let's call it user profiles. And here I will add the public property. Great user profiles. Uh, sorry. Okay, here in this get. It's just like this. So that's nice. Why I'm doing this? Because every time I want to call this function, I don't want to initialize a new instance of it. I will initialize it once, and in the next call, I'm just going to retrieve it. So what I, I will do is to call if user profile that private field is equals to null, then initialize it. User profiles this interface with a new instance of user profiles repository just like this. So those won't be injected from the dependency injection container, but the one that will be injected is the unit of work. So as you can see, I can initialize the repositories here because I know here I'm in the entity framework implementation and this one is basically for entity framework, so it's fine. What I'm going to do then to put register this in the dependency injection container, then I can inject that within the services or the business services 
So I have access just like dealing with a dependency injection container, dependence, uh, sorry, DB context and entity framework, but using this abstraction or this abstracted interface. So nice. We still have to implement this, and that's a pretty simple. Let's make public async task commit changes async. And here, what we call is db.save changes async. And that's it. It's pretty, pretty simple. Just like this. You will see in the next video when we will create the services, how we will use this. But for the time being, let's make a very quick recap. Here, I have created this interface called iUnit of Work, which is basically uh, the peer of, for the DB context in the entity framework here. So you can say that this one is just similar to the DB context. Here we will have all the properties. You remember the DB context when you have the DB sets. Here we will have the repositories. And at the end, we have the committee changes async. So for example, I add a property for the user profile, then I add a new event, add a new organization. At the end, I call this one to save all the changes. Okay, this is what the unit of fork will do. And here I have the implementation for the entity framework. So I have injected an instance of application DB context, then I have implemented this property, I have implemented like this. So in this case, the first time I call it, I check if this one is null, okay, create a new instance for it. And if it's not, if it's not null, then okay, directly return this instance. So in this case, it's not going to be initialized every time I call it. At the end, I have implemented also this method, uh, which is basically will call the DB dot save changes async so this is great and as i said before i can very easily change this implementation for cosmos db mongodb or whatever and implement unit testing mocking and other stuff so implementing this pattern is very useful and you will see that uh, while we are implementing the services starting from the next video so the last step i should do is just register this in the dependency injection container so let's implement this by Going here, let's go to the API. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm in the client. This is the API. And here I have this extension. Let me go for it. Great, here I'm going, I, I put all uh, the stuff here to keep the startup clean. So static void, I can add it here, but okay, let me create a function for that. You need to fork, great, this, I service collection services and here it's going to be very simple add scope i unit of work great and ef unit of work so uh, basically what i have to do is to import this library here what i can do is either to click here and implement add it or i can click here and add reference to tickets basket dot repositories the repositories assembly should be added as a reference here. So great, right now I have it here. Everything is just working fine. Right now let's move to the startup.cs and call this function in the configure services method. So this is startup, very nice. Here I'm going to call this nice function add unit of work. So that's it. Right now we are ready to move to the services layer which actually the great one and we will see all the interaction with uh, from the next video with the data we will start using postman and things will be amazing starting from the next video we'll see some let's say um, interaction not just working on infrastructure and other stuff so thank you so much for watching if you have any questions don't forget you don't hesitate to put them in the comment section and also don't forget to hit the like subscribe to help us um, add more and more content. Thanks. See you in the next video.